Hello, welcome back. The aim of today is to get back to me. Get back to moi. I've already been pursuing that in many myriad ways this year. And I feel like this has been an ongoing journey, but let me just break it down to you. I feel like I am just going full gung-ho into my interests this year. And I feel like YouTube feels like the most safe of the social media platforms to do that. I have a very active audience on Instagram and TikTok. I feel like that's where I make the majority of my content professionally. And this place has kind of been nebulous for a long time. And I don't want to make any like grand statements about things because I've not been very good about updating this channel. And now I'm just going to throw stuff at the screen at the, I'm gonna throw stuff at the wall and see what sticks. And I thought that I would just take you along my personal journey. And my personal journey is getting into my spooky side and letting my like spooky side break free. I have always been interested in the macabre, dark aesthetic, dark fairy tale, spooky stuff, but I have usually just limited that to like Halloween time because I have ADHD and um, I get distracted. You know what I mean? <sighs> well, we're not gonna let ourselves get distracted anymore. We are going full into our Anne Rice era and that's gonna consist of a lot of things. For me personally, it means that I'm no longer gonna be afraid of what like people externally think of me. I'm getting a lot of tattoos. I've already gotten quite a few this year, I'm so excited. And I am just spooky 24 seven. And I'm reading a lot of horror, I'm reading a lot of fantasy. I'm just having fun. I feel like I am going back to all the things that I loved as a kid. So far this year, I've been traveling. I have not had the same like winter spring experience that I had last year. For reference, I moved to uh, New York just a little bit above the city over a year ago. And that's also been a big part of like this big identity journey I've been on. I wanted to live close to Sleepy Hollow. Sue me, I wanna be near the pumpkins. And I had a great winter this year because I did a lot of travel, but I am ready to hunker down as it were and just get back to the things that i love which is my spooky stuff last night my husband and i watched Bram stoker's dracula he had never seen it before and we had a ball he also rented me a bunch of scary movies from the library and he ordered me a course on horror writing which is so sweet that's something that's a really big goal post for me is to write a scary story i don't know about like Someone's f***ing calling me. It's my husband. Hello? Okay, I'm leaving the library. They're about to close, so. Oh, yeah, come on home. Um, are you hungry? Do you want me to pick you up something or do you want me to just come home? I just had like a bean burrito, but I thought you could pick me up and we could go to the store together because I wanted to make this French onion soup that I saw on TikTok that I thought would be uh, okay. really fun. Or we could do like, you, you talked about getting, no, that could, hmm. What were you thinking about picking up? Oh, I don't know. Okay, do you have any hankerings? No, but I can also like, we could also just go across the street and pick up some microwave. Microwave, say no more or fam. Like, or like oven, whatever. Just something to like where you don't have to actually think about it. Those are the, that's the coziest meals. You know this. I'm not sure if you ever got to eat, but I'm sure that like, it may, might feel like you haven't started your day yet, so I don't want you to like have to come. No, that is how it feels. I'm literally recording the intro to my video right now, and I uh, didn't stop for I'm our phone sorry. call. No, don't apologize. I think it's nice. Plus, everyone gets to see my cute phone case. <laughs> well, that sounds good. Okay, cool. Well, I will get back to my recording, so I only have four minutes. Damn it! This thing takes forever to charge! Okay, <laughs> I only have four minutes to record. So, my goal this weekend, because I've also gotten out of, of reading lately, is to start the engine again with a few novellas. This is the first one that I've already started reading. This is The Butcher in the Forest. I saw this at Strand. My friend from out of town came to visit me and we had to make a pit stop at Strand in New York. If you're not familiar, Strand is like such an institution in New York City. And they claim that they have over 18 miles of books 
and this was on the horror new release. I am 67 pages into it and it's only 160 pages. So there's like a great sense of accomplishment with that, which I love. It's really wonderful so far. What I like about it is that it has a female protagonist in her 40s. Her name is Varys. She lives in this kingdom that is ruled over by a tyrant king. And the tyrant king has committed just atrocities over the people of this land. And one night his children go missing into the forest and the forest is very, honestly, it's very law and order SVU coded. <laughs> Because like once you go into the forest, there's only a matter of hours before we can get you out or you're just like a goner. So to me immediately, I was like, okay, like Detective Olivia Benson, but set in like the middle ages. That's kind of the energy of this so far. The woods is really interesting how it's characterized. The, the writing, the prose in this is exquisite. It's really beautiful. If you've been looking to sink your teeth into something that doesn't like mince words in terms of like, that's an that's inappropriate expression, but every single word in this is important, which is why I feel like it takes, even though it's a novella and you're like, oh, I can consume this rather quickly. I think it takes a, a certain amount of attention from you. I feel like everything is important. Everything is exciting. Everything is moving this plot forward. It's great. It's very cinematic. I'm enjoying this so far. I've got Bloom, Sapphic, Vampires, supposedly maybe referencing Carmilla, which is a, a vampire story from the 1800s. We've got Yellow Jessamine. This is by an author that I've previously read. I actually DNF'd her book, but honestly it was just because my life was very busy at that moment and I felt that everything was too convoluted for me to jump back in. But that other book she wrote was a Crimson Peak like inspired story and I love Crimson Peak. So I thought I would jump in with her novella and then maybe explore that longer book. And then I've got Nettle and Bone, which is longer than all the other ones. <laughs> all these other ones are so much shorter. I mean, not so much shorter by a large margin, but just like shorter. So let's read. Today was a substantial mail day, so I thought I would just show you the mail and unbox some things. I already opened this. I went on eBay and I got the Over the Garden Wall soundtrack on vinyl. The vinyl is currently in the living room where my husband is working. Otherwise I would go grab it, but look how beautiful the embossing is on this. So cute. I went on eBay and I bought some soundtracks that I had like missed out on for whatever reason. I think I we didn't have like, we didn't have a record player, but I wasn't really purchasing vinyl at the time. I just was like, I don't necessarily need another thing to collect, but I'm being very specific about the things I'm getting. So I purchased the Over the Garden Wall soundtrack, the Emma soundtrack, the recent 2019 version of Emma. And I also got another 2019, another 2019 soundtrack from Greta Gerwig's Little Women, and I listen to those all the time. Over the Garden Wall, more so, I am waiting for fall, even though I put this on the record player right away, but I was like, I gotta take this off. We gotta save this, we gotta savor it. You know what I mean? We gotta save it for later. So that's gonna be later, and I can't wait to get Little Women and Emma, because I'm going to definitely listen to Emma. All the spring and summer, I feel like it has the best spring vibes. So let's go, let's open some stuff that I got. I'm a book of the month freak. You know what? I, it's not sponsored. I am just an avid book of the month girly pop. I feel like it's very easy to fall into that because the membership price is already good. And then if you purchase add-on books, I sometimes wait for books that I'm interested in reading to hit book of the month because the add-on price, I think is only like an additional 10-ish dollars and books are expensive and they're hardback books. And I honestly love that the spine has the book of the month um, logo on it. Page is just a number. I don't know how I feel about that one. This was the selection that I chose for April, How to End a Love Story. This one, I believe, I'm just gonna try and recall some of these plots like off the top of my noggin, which I won't be able to do with my add-ons because I've already forgot. This one, I believe, is about two people that knew each other previously, and now they find themselves both writing on the same movie or television show. They have some kind of Hollywood career, and they pick up the pieces. I think they're both dealing with a traumatic past, and it's a love story. I love reading a contemporary romance book, kind of in between, like, heavier hitting, like, dark fantasy or horror stuff, just because it's, like, a really nice reset button for me. And I thought, this looks good. A Gentleman in Moscow. This has been recently made into, I don't know if it's a mini series or a movie, but something with Ewan McGregor, who is childhood crush of mine. And I believe it's a man who is like house 
imprisoned by the government in a beautiful hotel. It was giving Wes Anderson energy, like Grand Budapest Hotel energy from the trailer. And I thought, oh, when I saw this, I didn't realize it was a book before it was a miniseries. And I think that premise sounds really good. Yeah. Yes, he's, he's under house arrest. House imprisonment. Okay, girl. The Maidens. This was a highly recommended dark academia book with um, kind of like central female characters in some, I think it's obviously like a classics department or like a grief department at their school and they all call themselves the Maidens. One of my favorite reads last year was Secret History. So I feel like I'm trying to front load myself with more dark academia. Academia? I can't say dark academia because it sounds like macadamia nut. And then I got The Maid. I don't know anything about this. I assume it's not a maid. I think it's a mystery, which I love mysteries. And I feel like I'm just trying to flex my thriller muscle a little bit. Thrills and chills, what the back says. And this is extremely popular. I see it everywhere. And sometimes, you know, you don't want to miss out on the zeitgeist. I think we're going to be getting into some like fashion-y things, which if you follow me on Instagram and TikTok, and I upload, um, I upload fashion shorts here, which you've probably seen if you're subscribed to my channel, but like fashion is kind of like my main vertical on other platforms. I'm trying to use this platform as means to expand outside of that. Okay, I know what these things are. It occurred to me that I haven't read Al Edgar Allan Poe since high school. So I got myself a really pretty, I don't think it's, I don't think it's his full works, but I feel like it's, you know, some of the most beloved, greatest works. This copy is a vibe. Do you guys hear my cat screaming? He's fine, he's fed. He's either trying to get in this room or he's going to beg for ice. Let's see. Kazi! He's being, he's crying. There, oh hi, Mr. Baby. <laughs> hi, oh, he's in here now, okay. Do you wanna help me unbox stuff? He probably wants to help to find like silica packs and eat them. My cat, I feel like eats everything but cat food. I've taken him to the hospital because he had like an obstruction. Thankfully, we didn't have to pay for a surgery. He passed it on his own. But I swear to God, if, if it ain't food, he wants to eat it. This is for your Stanley. If you have a Stanley water bottle, which I do, I like Stanley water bottle. My Stanley water bottle video from like two or three years ago is like one of my most watched YouTube videos, which shocks me. But this um, particular video was me searching for Stanley and I feel like <laughs> I still get comments on it like to this day of people being like, you can find them here or there. And I'm like, mama, it's been three years. I've accumulated a couple of Stanleys by now, but I have not accumulated this. I have, okay, I'll show you why I got this. Let me get off my butt. So I got this sling for my Stanley cup because I saw an adorable video from an influencer, Juliana Claire, and we're actually wrapped by the same agency. And she put her little Lululemon like mini backpack on this like sleeve for the Stanley and then like puts, I don't know, like little necessary to go items. I just thought it was cute. And it also comes with a crossbody strap. So you can be like strapped in with your water with this tiny backpack. I don't know, it was a vibe. I did it. Anyways, I saw this backpack thing. I thought it was a vibe. So I'm doing it. And I'm gonna pack it up with like tiny little miniatures. There's nothing I love more than Dr. Pepper Zero. Okay. I have like a huge box from Free People. And I have a girlfriend who is also plus size. And she has been a fan of their activewear. And she uh, wears a size smaller than me in it. I don't know about this. I don't know about this color. What color is this to you? I mean, it looks red on camera. In life, I think it looks almost like hot pink. I'm being very specific about color right now. I'm really trying to, like I said, I'm trying to have my inner goth girl come out. So I'm only doing like greens and like creamy whites and white and black and red as, as like my main color palette. This is the Nightingale cardigan. I have this in both white and black. And then I saw it in like a true red, but it doesn't look, there's something about it in person that doesn't really look true red. Let's just hold it up to my face. We'll do a little color theory. What do you think? These are like the best, but I just don't want it to look too like coral. But I'm gonna ask my husband, I'm gonna see what his input is and be like, does this look red? Like what color does this look to you? Cause I need some feedback on that. Maybe it's the lighting in this room. I have some really weird lights cause these red items aren't looking as red. Oh, red is such a hard color to really nail down. I don't, okay. So I'm intrigued. 
we'll see if these fit. I don't want to try on right now on camera, but I just got some like workout leggings. We will see. We'll see. I'm a big girl. Workout leggings. And I also got workout top. I've been sneaking into free people for years, by the way. Even when I was like size 26, sneaking into free people. Free people should, you know, be making plus sizes because they fit plus sizes. Okay, there's like a bra top also in red. I feel like this is good. This is good. It's looking correct red to me in person. Good. You guys are probably like, what is wrong with her? But I've gotten really specific about color lately. And maybe they're like not the right tone of red. Maybe I'm looking for like a blue red and they're more of an orange red. He's being so patient and wanting to leave the room. Okay. Maybe I need a blue red. Okay. Yes. Okay. You know, you can always trust black. This quilted free people bag, I have it in tan. I've had it for three years or whenever they first started selling this particular one. These are so good. These are massive. The cavity of this bag, oh, she can hold so much. And I needed a black one because, you know, tan is not one of my prescribed colors that I'm working on. And um, I can't wait to put a little Bath and Body Works Halloween anti back keychain on this. I think it's going to be amazing. So cute. Okay. Also, one thing. I'm, I know I'm like, do you think these things will fit me and they're not really my size, but I can fit into them? I am, I have been losing weight like for the past year. I've lost like 50, 60 pounds. Lately, I feel like I've hit kind of like a plateau and I'm trying to like jumpstart my way out of that. But like what I have really found is like free people is so good for weight loss because their garments are stretchy and oversized. And then when you like shrink, you don't have to get rid of them because then they like look even more like oversized, like the way they're supposed to. It's great. I feel like I haven't repurchased any free people items. This, this cardigan though, I'll say this, like these cardigans I have in an extra large and they are massive on me and I'm still like a size 20. So let that be your guide. I sized down to a large and I feel like this is still like, these are big sweaters and they're really cozy and thick. So I am kind of like dabbling in brands that do not carry plus sizes and I've had some great success. Aritzia. I saw a dress on Noelle Downing stories. She looked insane in it so i was like uh i need this it reminds me significantly of an old photograph of marilyn monroe it's a specific neckline like this is a very specific neckline there's an old photo of marilyn monroe i believe that she's like with arthur miller at the time and they might be in westchester because they got married in westchester oh losing my mind about that and the neckline on this reminded me so much of that. This is just like an A-line linen black dress. Maybe I'll wear this tomorrow. This looks like it's gonna work just from eyeballing it. This looks like it and I feel like I'm looking for like, you know, like a chesty dressy for spring. Oh, this is such good quality. Oh my gosh. My LTK, I'll link in my um, description box below. I post all my outfits there. If you wanna specifically see fashion, check out my shorts here on YouTube, or you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok. I'm super active on there. And I also like showcase things that I don't necessarily own, but I think I curate things for a broad audience. So if you're a plus size, if you're a standard size, you'll find something for you. I really have always made sure I've been pretty inclusive with my sizing, like showing a broad swath of everybody, not just plus sizes, not just standard sizes. So if you want specifically fashion stuff, you can go there, but I also wanna make some long form fashion content here. That's that was my pile today. So excited about just like being a big reader this year. And I think that's why I'm kind of coming to YouTube more because, um, oh my God, these are like, this feels like a Bible. The sound reminds me of, you know, not Bible. This is so specific. It reminds me of like the hymnals that we had in um, elementary school because I went to a, a little chapel school. Okay, time to clean up my mess and to determine if my red items are actually red. This is so cute. Um, ankle length. Girl, look at that booty. So this is a Free People Extra Large. I'm a size 20. Lots and lots of stretch. Is it pulling down? Slightly in the tush, but not any more than like what I already wear. I think that my color palette is like red riding hood, spooky snow white. This is what I wanna show up to like the yoga class. I love this. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, I'm just, I'm scary. Oh, 
yeah i love i love the top so much i love this v this is very comparable to the like lululemon align top also all of this is very comparable to lululemon free people i love this so much i mean i'm a little bit belly in down here it's all gravy baby it's all gravy and the idea i feel like this is the ticker see i wanted this to be like a monochromatic look for yoga but like girl i feel like you can see how much more pink it is now it's so pink but also this is how oversized these sweaters are this is a size large i also have extra large in these but the large is now perfect but this color is just not it i know i feel like i'm being so just like anal retentive about this but when you know you know here's this dress again I feel like just like a little bit tight in the tummy. It doesn't like hurt. It just like, it shows the underpants. Normally I wouldn't be this person that advocates for like keeping a size <laughs> until it fits you. But like this like whole GLP-1 medication thing is a different ballpark because more than likely it will eventually fit. This is so romantic and it is good quality linen. Like I can just feel it, it breathes. That neckline is so pretty. Okay. I am going to sit on this for like a week. There's an Aritzia near me and if I don't like it, if I feel like there's not much like give here, then I'll return her. But this is really pretty, just basic black. I love this. Then I have this like straw witch hat that I can wear, you know, to the farmer's market in Sleepy Hollow, the Sleepy Hollow farmer's market. They won't think I'm weird. I also wanna go to Salem. This is kind of a summer in Salem look. Summer in Salem. All right, Friday, 8.55 p.m. I've only been trying to read all day long, but kept getting interrupted by my own ADHD and just life stuff. But I have finished The Butcher of the Forest. Definitely more of a dark fairy tale than like straightforward horror. I really enjoyed this. I, I have to say, it's so funny that I got the Over the Garden Wall final record because if I were to compare it to two things, it reminds me of like an A24 film, maybe like The Green Knight, maybe The Witch, just something that feels very dark and folkloric meets Over the Garden Wall. <laughs> it takes place majorly in the woods and there are such vivid descriptions about the beings that inhabit the woods there's kind of like two final beings that she encounters in the woods and not a spoiler but the second to the last one is at a banquet table and that whole scene was just so gripping and visceral and emotional for me i really enjoyed this visually just like beautiful and it felt like a fairy tale in insofar as like i couldn't predict a lot of stuff i really appreciated that it didn't always make perfect sense things didn't always tie in a box because that reminds me of reading fairy tales like reading Grimm's fairy tales reading pieces of folklore I feel like modern western storytelling has everything like wrap up really neatly but there's something that's so evocative and in mood setting about this novella that I wasn't unsatisfied by certain things not being I found it very satisfying at the end basically a, a significant part of it takes place in autumn I definitely would recommend this as like a spooky read. It's been really interesting to read this while experiencing the modern world and current events because a lot of this is a meditation on power and um, corruption and war and grief and who's responsible for like that type of atrocity and what role our hero of the story, Varys, who is tasked with saving the children of a very evil king um, her her mental anguish that she goes through while she's in pursuit of the children in the woods is like, am I just helping create uh, another tyrant? Am I helping create uh, the same future for the, the people that come after me that I had to go through? And there's some ex pretty violent recollections of her life during the war. There's like mentions of like essay. So very brief of course but i mean it's dark certainly but i think that like the the mystical semi-humanoid woodland creatures keep you in a place where i i didn't feel like completely like sad 
or heavy reading this, if that makes sense. I like I like all the magical elements. I like that they don't spend forever like being like, this is why she has this ability or things like that. I think they, it, I just love when something trusts the intelligence of a reader. And I feel like this is a really powerful novella, short story, what have you. And I almost feel like the length of it is what makes it so powerful is that it's just a simple story that feels very contained, but is overall like a, a greater allegory for much more pow powerful themes. Um, not to get all deep, but I do wonder if like reading novellas, because the authors have to, I think, be super concise and, and really keep themselves aware of what they're putting to page, if everything thusly becomes more weighted and important and all that. Anyways, I really enjoyed this. I thought it was so evocative and and just I could visualize it. I, I would love like someone like Robert Eggers to get a hold of this and, and, and I'd love to see like a cinematic version of this. It would be very, very cool, especially to see a woman in her 40s like lead a fantasy. Yeah, I really enjoyed this. This is really cool. Read The Butcher in the Forest. Butcher of the Forest. Vibes. Okay, um, let's go eat some pizza because, well, it's probably not done yet. We just put it in the oven, but let's like change up the atmosphere and pick another book to start. Oh my gosh, there's something so exciting and satisfying about finishing a novella. Boom. You making me pizza. Clean it up. Got the pizzas in the cooker. In the cooker. That's where the pizza goes. The pizza? You know where the pizza goes? In the cooker. <laughs> My husband doctored up a plain cheese pizza with some pepperoni and some extra cheese. It's a good night. And I'm gonna doctor it up with some hot sauce. I think we're gonna watch something and then I'm gonna tap into the next one. Whichever one I choose. I don't know which one I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to read the back. Yusti, look how cute our kitties are. This is Zoe. Oh, oh, do you love him so much? Are you guys best friends? Good morning, it's time to play a little Disney Dreamlight Valley. And then I'm gonna be hopping into reading Bloom. I have my iced coffee that my husband made. I just tried this new Chobani creamer. Oh, if you see Moana, tell her Maui says you're welcome. I've been annoyed by this jerk all day. Uh, I just got this new uh, creamer from Chobani, which is like cookie dough flavored and it's very good. Mm. Yeah, let's play some video games. Oh, I have this great shirt that I got from Etsy. Probably can't see it all, but I'll detail it to you. It says, I like my books spicy and my Dr. Pepper icy, which is a very true thing about me. I'm a Dr. Pepper enthusiast in this house. We're all Dr. Pepper enthusiasts in this house. My husband is uh, working and uh, I'm playing a video game, you know, patriarchy who? didn't read it all yesterday. You saw me playing some Disney Dreamlight Valley. Then at some point I took an adult refreshment and I played more video games. I ended up watching A Knight's Tale, which was free on Tubi. Highly recommend re-watching that because I hadn't seen that since I was a kid and it was just good vibes. And then after that, I think we stayed up and watched SNL and we fell asleep. Today we went to the city and saw a play. 
We saw Teeth. I don't know if this is a faithful adaptation of the 2007 film because I haven't seen it, which is kind of nuts. I might have to go and watch that, but it was a really campy show. If you are a fan of horror, definitely recommend this. And if you're a fan of that movie, I definitely recommend it. I went and I like read the full Wikipedia plot and I was like, does this line up? And it does. Um, then we just like came home. I'm feeling so emotional. I'm feeling just like totally PMSy. Just feeling like I don't know, just down in general. And I feel like that probably contributed to like why I didn't really get anything accomplished yesterday when it came to my reading. But I am happy because overall this weekend, like I clearly needed to like rest and just do my own thing at my own pace. And like reading one novella over the course of a weekend that I'm like in my like PMS, PMDD era, I think is pretty good. But I am going to start reading Bloom now. I feel like I'll feel really proud of myself if I accomplish a little bit of reading today. And I truly like, I'm so blue. On the way home from the train station, I was like, please get me a pink drink from Starbucks. And the way I like have sucked this down, so fast is just unreal to me. Nothing hits like a 2010s favorite. <laughs> we were in the city. We had Raising Cane's, which was ex exquisite. I haven't had Raising Cane's in over a year and a half because they don't have them where I live and they hadn't had them in New York like at all, I guess ever until they just got the new one in um, Midtown. So that was delicious. It was delicious. You might even call me a caniac. <laughs> I'm a big fan of that sauce. That sauce is so good. I just like got home and I like tried to like look at YouTube just to see like what videos I want to watch and like truly the beginning of everything I tried to put on just like infuriated me and that's how I know that I am just in a PMS mood and I need to chill out. I just need to like focus on myself. So let's read Bloom. I, I'm excited about reading this one because it seemed to be in contemporary language, which I think will be a nice departure from the previous book that I read, which was beautiful, it was gorgeous prose, all of that. But like having a, a book that's more contemporary is kind of a nice swap over to trick the old noggin up and it may even flow a little bit faster. I think also I really admire people that can just like dive from one book into the other because I do find that like I often get into reading slumps based on like how awesome my previous book that I read was. The Butcher of the Forest was really beautiful and that also probably contributed to why I didn't do any reading at all yesterday, even though I like fully intended to slap the day full of reading brain fog. Let's jump into this and have fun. Mm -hmm. 